In this video, I'll show you how to solve the Alex problem called calculating heat of reaction from constant pressure calorimetry data. This problem looks super overwhelming. There's a lot of words in this problem. It's asking us uh, three different questions to solve. Looks like it's gonna be really tricky and I'm not gonna lie to you, the calculations are a little bit intense, but you can absolutely solve this problem. It's not as hard as it looks. I flipped through a lot of different versions of the problem and it looks like they are all set up in the exact same way, which is nice. So you can just kind of follow along with what I'm doing in this problem. So first of all, Alex is going to give you a mass of a particular substance. Uh, for me, the substance that I got was KCl. And whatever that substance is, uh, you're going to need to look up the molecular weight of that substance. So 74.55 grams per mole, that's the molecular weight of KCl. If you don't have KCl, you're going to need to look up or calculate the molecular weight of whatever substance you have here. So Alex is going to tell you a particular amount of that substance, and it is going to be dissolved in 200 grams of water. Uh, for my problem, it's 200 grams of water. Yours might be a different mass of water. The other thing that you need to pay attention to in this problem is that you're going to have a couple of temperatures. So I have 21 degrees C to 17.9 degrees C, and you're going to want to pay a little bit of attention to whatever clue Alex is giving you about that temperature change. So for mine, it's saying that the temperature is falling from a high temperature down to a lower temperature. Yours might say that the temperature is rising from a low temperature to a high temperature, pay attention to that. And then Alex is going to kind of throw you off a little bit by telling you something about time. Time is not a factor in this problem, so don't pay attention to that. We also don't need to worry about the, oh, maybe we do. We'll leave that there. Um, we've got a balanced equation. We may or may not need to worry about that. I don't think that we do, but we'll, we'll pay attention to it for a second. And then we can just kind of, please just don't think about the rest of this stuff. Uh, okay, so the questions that were being asked with this problem, first of all, is asking us, is the reaction exothermic, endothermic, or neither? Well, first of all, this is not an option. Uh, it's going to be either exothermic or endothermic. And the way that you're going to tell uh, exothermic versus endothermic is by looking at the way that the temperature changes. So if the reaction is exothermic or the process is exothermic, that means that heat is exiting or leaving. So if we're dealing with an exothermic situation, the temperature of the water will be going up. And this is because the, the reaction that's taking place inside the water is releasing heat and the heat that it's releasing is going to be causing the temperature of the water to increase or go up. If the reaction is endothermic, then we're going to see the temperature of the water going down. So to answer this first question, all that we're going to do is look at the way the temperature is changing. Mine says that the temperature is falling. That means that the temperature of the water is going down and that makes this process endothermic. Last but not, or not last, I guess not last, next, it wants us to calculate the amount of heat that was released or absorbed. The way that Alex is phrasing this problem, it's just saying calculate the amount of heat. Either released heat or absorbed heat, just calculate the amount of heat. And that's Alex's way of asking you to calculate the absolute value. It's the absolute value of the heat. Uh, we know that we have conventions. If the heat is being released versus uh, absorbed, sometimes we give it a negative sign versus a positive sign. But the way that Alex has worded this problem, it just wants the absolute value of the heat, meaning that whatever you get here, uh, you're going to answer. Your answer here is always going to be a positive number. And I do want to emphasize that this is not the case for everything in the world all the time. This is just the case for this particular Alex problem because of the way Alex is wording the problem. It's kind of covering its bases by saying, calculate the heat that was either released or absorbed, doesn't matter what direction, just calculate the value of the heat. To calculate the value of the heat, we're gonna be using the QSMAT equation, Q equals SM delta T, Q equals S m delta t and in this equation q is the heat and it is going to be given to us in units of joules s is the specific heat and for this problem we're going to be using the specific heat of water uh, the majority of the stuff in this system is water we've got 200 grams of water so we'll be using the specific heat of water that's a number that you can look up i think alex is kind of hinting that you should get it from the data data tab um, but i'm just going to tell you the value uh, is 4. 184. 
the units are joules per gram degrees C. You might see it with a slightly different unit, a different temperature unit. You could see it in joules per gram Kelvin and that's okay. Uh, for this, the mass, this is going to be the mass in grams. And this is going to be the mass in grams of everything that we have in that particular system. So that's going to be the water and then whatever thing you have in the water. So for mine, it's that the 12 grams of potassium chloride. And then our delta T right here, this is going to be our temperature change. And we're going to calculate that, uh, the temperature change of the water, we're going to calculate that by taking the final temperature minus the initial temperature. You can do that in degrees C, or you could do it in Kelvin. I think the problem only will give you temperature values in Kelvin. Uh, okay, so we'll go ahead and plug in the things that we need to plug into this equation. Q equals S, which is 4.184 joules per gram degrees C. Um, the mass of everything, so I have 12 grams and I have 200 grams, so that's going to be 212 grams. And then my temperature change, my final temperature minus my initial temperature. Now, technically, we don't really need to be that careful about it in this particular problem because Alex is just asking us to give an absolute value, but we should try really hard to get this correct. Uh, it says that the water is falling from, so that means 21 is my initial temperature, down to, that means that the 17.9 is my final temperature. So final minus initial, I've got 17.9 minus 21.0. And we'll go ahead and work this math out, 4.184 times 212 times 17.9 minus 21 gives me negative 2,749.7. My units are, oh, I forgot a unit out here on my temperature. My units are um, joules. That is, again, what we did there was just calculate the heat. Now remember, because Alex has got some clever wording, it just wants this to be in a, a positive value. So the answer is going to be not negative, but it's just going to be positive 2,749.7 joules. Also notice Alex wants this answer in units of kilojoules, not joules. So I'm going to divide this by 1,000, 2.7497 kilojoules. And then uh, somewhere I saw, oh yeah, here it says two significant digits. So we just want two sig figs. So that is going to be 2.7 kilojoules, always positive. Now, last but not least, Alex wants us to calculate the reaction enthalpy per mole of KCl. The reaction enthalpy, so that is going to be, it's kind of, the equation for calculating, calculating it is just already kind of given to us. We're going to take the kilojoules that we just calculated, and we're going to divide that by the moles of KCl. And so I think that I'm going to be able to squeeze that calculation in over here on the side. Delta H is our kilojoules, um, our, our heat in units of kilojoules, divided by the moles of KCl. It's really important that you are dividing by the moles of KCl, not water, because this problem is specifically asking us to calculate the delta H per mole of KCl. Does not asking us about water. Okay, so our Q that we calculated is 2.7, uh, and that is units that was units of kilojoules. And the moles of KCl, we are just going to, need to do a quick conversion up here. The problem gave us the mass. I went ahead and looked up the molecular weight, so we need to do a quick gram to mole conversion. 12 grams of KCl, uh, one mole of KCl is 74.55 grams. And we'll put that into the calculator. 12 divided by 74.55 is 0.161 moles. Stick that down there, 0.161 mole. Go ahead and get that calculated. 2.7 divided by 0.161 is 16.77 
kilojoules per mole. Now, one last thing before you stick this into uh, Alex is the answer. Uh, oh, we've got to do this to two sig figs, so it's going to be 17 kilojoules per mole. One last thing before we go and put this, uh, this 17 kilojoules per mole in here as our answer, we've now, again, we need to pay attention to sign again. So in the previous part of the problem right here, we didn't need to pay attention to sign. And in fact, we needed to express our answer as a positive number, no matter what, because Alex was looking for the absolute value. In this part of the problem, Alex does want us to have the correct sign for delta H. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and write my, my value. My value was 16. The correct sign for delta H is going to be based off of the answer that you gave up here in this particular, in the first part of the problem. So if you have, uh, we'll let's see, we'll write it right here. If you said that your reaction was endothermic, and again, we made that decision based on the way the temperature was changing. If the reaction is endothermic, you are going to have a positive value for delta H. If your reaction is exothermic, then you're going to have a negative value of delta H. Now, if you... Um, <laughs> If you just plug in 2.7, or even if you just plug in the value of Q that you get, there's a chance that you're going to get the sign correct just by luck, but there's also a chance that you're going to get the sign wrong. So make sure when you're deciding what the sign is here, what you should be looking at is not your Q value and also not this value right here. You should be looking at the decision that you made in this very first part of the problem about whether the reaction was exothermic or endothermic. So good luck with this problem. Just take your time with the calculations. Don't make any mistakes along the way and you should be able to uh, work through this problem pretty quickly.